Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to draw a Therizinosaurus. I'm going to start off with the basic shapes to try and get a good idea for the proportions. Instead of just jumping into the outline. So let's have the head be somewhere up here. The Therizinosaurus stands upright. It's a bipedal theropod, sort of. So we're going to have the head be sort of up here in the top right corner of our page. Just draw a little oval for it. Nothing too fancy. I'm going to have the neck. Just draw a straight line for where we want the neck to curve. Keep it sort of a very slanted S shape. Where it connects up to the head in a, a right hand curve like this. And then turns down and turns down to the left and underneath. And I will go for the body here. I'll draw a long all for the body. Like this, much larger. There's any source had a very massive torso, especially in comparison to the tiny head. So don't be afraid to make this a little bit a little bit wider, but keep it longer than it is wide. Even a little bit more there. All right, now for the back legs, you're gonna kind of connect the knee. The knee's basically just gonna be where the stomach starts. So just draw kind of an arch facing backwards like that. And then a smaller sort of arch like that for the calf. And then another Set of lines down here for where the foot's gonna be. We won't worry too much about that right now. Just make it wider. It's got a lot of mass to it to hold up its heavy body. It's a very large animal, so make sure you keep it nice and robust. Now you can even draw a bit of a, a hip back here. All right, now for the arms. We've got the first arm start up here. Just draw another kind of arch, basically, just to show where the first segment's gonna be. This is the elbow back here. And then draw another kind of arch coming out for where the, I guess, the forearm will be. Just keep it nice and long. A little bit thick and muscular, not too much. Something like that. And then we won't worry about this too much now, but of course we have the claws, the long, famously long claws. We'll just draw a little bit of an oval here for where the hand will be. And of course the claws. We'll just represent where they're gonna be. They will look completely different later on. All right, now let's kind of let's make this a little bit thicker. Let's have the underbelly start here and then make it nice and round. Like so. It's a very chonky animal, if, if you'd like to say. All right, now let's draw the, the left leg over here. It's gonna be kind of at a bit of a stance. So I'm gonna have the left leg So, a bit more forward, perfect. And of course, we won't worry about the feet too much right now. We'll just more worry about representing where they will be. And I'll draw the other arm. Let's have, it fa let's have it facing a bit back more. You won't really see this part of the arm. This part of the arm is blocked by the body, so just worry about this This part here is the forearm, just like it was here. Just draw another O for that. And of course, we'll have our claws and hand down here, basically just the same as the right arm. We'll have it, well, it's basically almost touch the ground. I think that's fine. All right, now let's connect the chest to the head with the neck. So let's bring our neck up like this. 
basically just follow this line. This line's kind of the center line of the neck. We'll erase it later on though. Can I connect that up there like so? And then do the same thing, making it and make sure you make sure it's thicker here than it is up here. Because it's this part's connecting to the whole body, this part's just connecting to the head. So make sure you evenly um, sort of thin it out, like keep it nice and like an, like an even sort of narration down there. All right, perfect. Now let's draw the tail. I'm not totally sure. I'm not a scientist. I don't really know how long that there is a distorted tail, as I'm being honest. I'm just gonna draw it. This is like a another just proportion line. This is not gonna be on the original drawing. Let's make the tail something like that. It looks fine. And then it's like this is basically where like the hip is. Like the reason this goes down like this, because it's like uh, you got like the hip bone, and then you've got like this one bone that comes down like that. I don't know the terminology, but just. Keep that in mind when coming here, so just kind of make this part dip up a little bit before coming back into the center line here. And do the same here, just narrow it down nicely. You don't have to be too married to the way the tail is going to look right now, but yeah, something like that looks fine. Alright, so now we have our basic shapes. I'm just going to erase basically everything we don't need, so I need a better eraser than this. I'll go grab one of those, so then I'll be right back and I'll have this, everything unnecessary erased. Alright, so I basically just erased all the, um, like the arch lines here that we had for the legs and the arms, as well as just any kind of, uh, messy arrangement of how I want the shapes to look. So now we're going to focus on refining our shapes a little bit more to make it more like a lifelike there's in a source. So we're going to start up here with the head. All right, so there has never actually been a Therizidosaurus skull discovered yet. There's been skulls of, like, relatives of Therizidosaurus, not this relatives of Therizidosaurus, but not Therizidosaurus itself. So you can kind of just, you don't have to think too much about how realistic it's going to look, because I'm not entirely sure how it would look either. <laughs> but let's try our best here. So... It's not, it's gonna sort of be like a T-Rex, but not too much so, like it'll be long and thin. With a, the eye ridge kind of popping out a little bit and the snout curving down together. Should be something like this. Just keep it nice and clean. And then the eye will be, make sure not to make it too big. Large animals, usually the eyes look quite small compared to the rest of the body. You can kind of keep it like that. If you can fit in, you can do a little pupil. I'm not, I'm not the best at drawing eyes, so that's the best you're gonna get from me. But anyways, now for the mouth. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what this is supposed to look like. <laughs> I, I loosely looked at a reference image before I attempted this part, but I didn't think too hard into it, so you can try and make it look better than mine if you'd like. I'm not too worried about the head. But yeah, we'll just kind of go with something like that for now. Kind of looks like a sauropod head. It's a, it's a long-necked animal, so you know, whatever. Maybe I'll just bring in Bring out the snout a little bit more. Underneath here. Art is a lot of just trial and error, you know. I don't usually try and do everything in one try, just for the sake of YouTube. I like to I like to make it authentic as much as possible. Alright now, so under the eye I was gonna add some wrinkles. And it's pretty small, so it's kinda hard to do much detail. So let's just or something like that. Let's even draw a nostril up here. There we are. Just gonna clean up some extra excess lines. It doesn't need to be too clean. It is a sketch, by the way. It's kind of too too small to do much shading or um. 
scaling, I should say. Maybe we'll just in a little bit of scales for underneath the eyes. And then fade it out. Because the eye will have more scales kind of in relative to everything else just because of how all the mus all the um the muscles and the skin folds happening there. But we won't look, we don't think too much into it. Let's move on now to the hands and the famously long claws. So let's kind of just erase the representations we have here and kind of get more of a forearm shape and an elbow. Just kind of keep it nice and meaty, but don't don't refine it too much. It's not like it's um, you know, a bodybuilder. There we are. So now let's draw. This is the hand here. We won't make the fingers too long. I don't think we'll just kind of make the finger make this part like indented here because that's where the claw is going to be coming out. Might make it a bit smaller than that though. Something like that. The middle one will make it longer than the other ones. I'm not too sure how accurate that is, but that's just kind of my standard procedure. All right, let's draw the claws. Don't make it too thick or too long. It's not as long as it is in like Jurassic World Dominion, but it is still extremely long. I think it's like a foot long, or I'm not entirely sure how long the Arizona Saurus claws are. But you definitely don't want to mess with it. Because he will lose. There we are. I think that looks pretty good. I'm not great at drawing hands either, so that's kind of. I'm going to go with that because I think that's the best I can do. <laughs> well, let's move on to this hand, which will likely be a bit harder because it's, it's more of an angle. I'll just erase the representations we have here. So now keep in mind this is a, like an angle. So let's draw the first finger here. It'll kind of be in front of the other ones. I'll draw middle middle one, something like that, as well as the third one. All right, now let's take the claws out. That's the third one. That's the middle one. And then there's the first one. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Let's zoom out a little bit there. Now I'm gonna move on to one of my least favorite parts of drawing dinosaurs, the feet. These are a hassle, but we can get through it together. So I'll just erase the excess stuff we have and then Let's draw the middle toe first. Let's have it something like this, sort of pointing outwards. It's got a bit of a stance, not too much. And make it look like it's standing on its toes, because that's how most like modern day birds and um, reptiles and well, the dinosaurs likely stood. More like on their, like the foot would be like this on the ground instead of just flat down like that. So you want to kind of keep that in mind. Let's make this part a little bit thicker. Like so, and bring out the toe like that. Gonna curve this top part in a little bit. There we are. I think it looks all right. Now let's do the same with the other foot, but 
Again, like this hand, it's going to be at an angle because it's on the other side and it's, you know. So let's have it on its toes here. So here's the first one. the heel off the ground and the second one it'll be longer so you can see it popping out however or the middle one sorry however you won't see the last one all right this one should be pretty short and quick unlike the tail because we're doing the tail now so it's kind of you can just kind of bold the lines if you'd like let me just try and fix the shape a little bit keep it um, narrowing down nice and smooth and evenly to about about that long I'd say it's pretty thick tail it's got a lot to balance up here and most of this will be covered by feathers by the way if you'd like to do so which I will be doing so later in the video but I think that should be pretty good for refining our shapes there we are now we're gonna move on to the detailing which is the feathering all right, we're gonna be, I'm gonna be kind of going through this quickly because this takes, this part of the drawing takes a while. We're gonna be doing the feathers across the whole body. I'll show you kind of how to do each part, but I will be speeding through most of it and you can um, kind of pause the video to try and keep up with what I'm doing or just uh, looking at how I'm demonstrating this. So for the head here, I'm actually gonna erase a little bit of this top line just to, but I don't know completely, make sure you can still see this as a guideline. And and replace this with feathers. So we're gonna kind of just do like these small little arches all the way down like this. You can kind of do this any way you want, but just make sure you've got them nice and small and in a um like a recognizable shape. So I'm just gonna kind of do this all along the back and I'll show you kind of how to fade it more into the bottom afterwards. So this is kind of what I got so far. I'm also going to just draw some like little, just sort of scribble along the back of this just to give some more of a popping up feeling of the feathers. Just kind of scribble along the top. It kind of gives it a bit more of a, a fuzzy texture. You can even do some scribbling for some variety of feathers. Like so. Maybe even darken in some places to add tufts, some more clumpiness, because, you know, it's not going to be perfect. It's a wild animal. It's going to have some um, imperfections in its lovely coat, like so. Maybe we'll just fade it up into the head like that. All right, I think it looks pretty good. So now, for the middle here, we're going to have this kind of, it's going to be sort of shiny. So, like, there'll be a bit of a... um a break in the actual lighting of the feathers here so you won't so you can kind of draw less feathers all on here now this doesn't mean there won't be less feathers on the actual animal there which is kind of to give a bit of a, a depth of lighting so it's kind of make lighter markings of feathers you don't you don't really have to draw like individual feathers just sort of make little scribbles to show that there are feathers there and from a distance and everything, it will create the illusion of feathers there. So yeah, I'm just kind of scribbling along, keeping it nice and even all the way. All right, now we're gonna kind of do same thing up here on the bottom, but like keeping it darker because the shading, but I'm not gonna do the same kind of like individual feathers pattern all the way down. I'm just gonna kind of do some scribbles. I like guess it's kind of drawing like up and down in this motion all the way down like so and maybe even just for 
artistic liberty and the fact that it's huge down here, you can kind of create longer feathers down here. Maybe even for this curve, you can have some more feathers popping out because of gravity. So like it'll just be sort of hanging out from underneath, but not so much here because this is basically a 90, almost a 90 degree drop off. So you won't see stuff like that sticking out like that. Underneath here, I'm gonna do much darker feathers because of the, the shading. Just kind of draw a nice long scribbles down like that. Does not need to be too toned. Art is not about you know if you can create the illusion of detail, that's that's the, that's the way to go. <laughs> Without doing it all individually, this is just a sketch. You don't need to worry too much about everything. Drawing feathers can look daunting, but as long as you can just get the correct lighting and illusion of textures. That's pretty much all you need to do. Make it darker under here again. I get darker in certain other spots, like make tufts of feathers, you know? Like up here as well. I'll just kind of randomly add little shadings just to give it a bit more of a natural look. I'll do so the same up here. And around the head, back here. You can even, just to blend it all, you can kind of go over it with your fingers. And I think that's kind of the, the cherry on the cake. All right, now let's move on. We'll do the body after. Let's work, let's focus on the hand. Right, now let's move on. We'll do the body after. Let's work, let's focus on the hand here. All right, so for the hand or the arm, this is kind of lightly erase what we had here, but not completely. Make sure you can still see it as a guideline. And we're going to add just these large arch shapes, arch shape, arch, arch shapes for where larger tufts of feathers will be because this is on the, on the arm. So it'll have a bit more of a bird like just look because it's related to birds. So let's just have larger tufts of feathers sticking out like so. Then we'll fade it down as we get to the, um, the wrist. All right, now let's kind of blend it into the arm with smaller feathers like we did on the back of the, on the, back of the neck up here. All right. I'm gonna kind of clean up some areas here. And then I'm basically just gonna do the same kind of thing we did on the neck here, but along the arm, kind of following the same rules. And I'll just kind of speed through that real quick. So I've done the arm here and I've made it to the wrist. We're going to kind of fade out the feathers on the wrist because we'll have it scaly for the fingers. Let me just bring back some of the, um, let's smudge it a little bit. So I'll just refine those once again. But yeah, so the fingers will be scaly and the wrist will sort of begin where the feathers will fade off. So let's just draw light lines for where the feathers will be sort of ending. And then just kind of use your finger to blend it all out. I use my finger up here a lot to blend the feathers together to create a bit more of a shaggier look. Like so. You can even add some more um, scribbles on the, around the arm here. Maybe even some larger tufts of feathers. Through here. 
I think it looks pretty good. Now we're not gonna worry too much about doing scale. We're not gonna worry too much about doing scales. I'll just kind of draw like little lines. Sort of like, you know, birch wood on a tree, just draw little lines like that. And it'll give the illusion of the um, a rough texture, so just a scaly reptilian. So let's kind of just do that a little bit, not too much. And the feathers will end, will end them about here. You can end whenever you want. There's no, no one to tell you what to do, but I'm just here to help. All right, now we're gonna do kind of the same thing on the other hand here. We'll just kind of, we don't have to worry about all this because it's all behind the body here. But let's just fade out some feathers. Make it a bit darker up here to show that this is behind everything and this is a bit further back. So it's gonna darken like where the arm or the cross is over here. Just create some darker lines as well as on the chest here. Just to make it look a bit more 3D. refining some of these as well. Kind of want to swatch everything like I do. <laughs> I have a bad habit of that. I need to get one of those pieces of paper that like covers everything so you don't swatch it, but then and, yeah, that's a hassle. Anyway, let's do the same thing as we do over here. Draw little lines like so. If you want to do scales, you can, but I'm just going to do it this way for now. Alright, so we got the hands and the neck done for feathering. I'm just going to quickly adjust kind of how this is going to attach into the body. I'll make this a bit thicker. Just for realism's sake, it's a large animal, it's going to have a lot of mass. Alright, so now we're going to do the body. So, same principles of feathering, just across kind of the whole length of the body here, keep it like a bit kind of dark on the top and then a bit lighter in the middle and then dark, much darker underneath just for that depth of lighting. So just kind of do that. You can do any kind of variation of feathers you want. You can do sort of this U thing uh, like we did on the top here. You can just kind of scribble all the way underneath, whatever you'd like. I'm just gonna kind of speed through this because this will take a while, but feel free to kind of just pause and replicate what I'm doing or uh, find out however you'd like to accomplish this.
So, I basically just got most of the body done here. I'm just going to, I'm just kind of adding a bit of a, a layer of feathers kind of going across the arm here and sort of where these more tufty feathers for the stomach is. Just a, a bit of a, a rug, I don't know. And I'll do kind of the same over the, over the legs here. It was kind of, just to sort of separate the kinds of feathers going across the body. But now, okay, I'm gonna show you just sort of what I'm gonna do for when I get towards the tail, as well as well as the leg here. Over the leg was kind of at this like the scribble kind of thing all along the bottom here. As well as on the back of the legs here. Just keep it nice, so it's sort of fuzzy, kind of fuzzy, sort of what I'm going for. And then I'm gonna do the same kind of scribble thing, keeping it nice and long, but. Kind of make it darker underneath where its joint is. So like make it a bit darker underneath the the knee here, as well as the back of the knee. Make it darker there, just to kind of add some more shading, and then as well as kind of curve the shading around the um, the calf, just to make it look round. Do the same with the um, like the the back, like the the I don't know what's called, but the, the the higher part of the leg there, above the calf. And just sort of shade around like that. I'll just kind of do the same thing all down the leg here. Bend it down to the toes here. We we'll do kind of the same thing we did with the arms here. So we'll just kind of draw little lines to make it look a bit bumpy and scaly. Like so. Maybe darken where kind of this toe connect meets up with that one. All right, there we go, that's pretty good. I'm basically gonna do all of that on this leg as well.
go. I'm just gonna kind of bring this out a bit more towards the tail and I'll show you kind of what I wanna do for that. Alright, I made it over to the tail. Now, what I want to do for the tail is kind of a cool thing. Let's start from the tip here. Like so, and then let's have it like, let's have long droopy feathers. So let's sort of do a rough sketch of what that will look like. But yeah, just like long, longer feathers like this. And then as we get further up here, Kind of make it shorter and shorter until it blends in here with the body, like so. Just kind of a cool, um... I see a lot of artists depict their Xenosaurus like this, and I think it's just sort of the standard way. So I'm going to conform into that by having longer downy feathers here at the tip. And just sort of add little tufts around as usual. Keep it nice and stylized however you'd like. So just like little scribbles and you can smudge it together like so. Again, I smudged up here a lot just to kind of create a nice flow feathers. So let's kind of do that. And then keeping the longer feathers fading down into there from up here in mind, I'm just gonna kind of keep going like this, but then sort of blending it in with these longer feathers here at the bottom. Now the last thing we're gonna do before we call this off is just add kind of any final touches you think you'd like to adjust with your animal. Like kind of down here by the toes. Um, I just kind of want to make these toenails look a bit nicer and then also uh, shade them in and just sort of, yeah, just kind of make them a little bit less bright so they're not as shiny and clean. He did not just get a pedicure, he's a wild animal. So just kind of make it a little bit dirtier a bit darker, but keep like a nice little shine somewhere. Because it is a, it is like a fingernail. It's going to be a little bit brighter in some places. There you are. Now make sure you kind of got like these back legs, anything behind, anything else, but poking out still. Just keep it a little bit darker and shaded. Anywhere in the joints, sort of shade in, just to make it pop up a little bit more. 
kind of the same through here, maybe even between these, between these feathers, just shade in a little bit. All goes towards making your drawing look even better. I'll make the tufts a little bit longer up here. Just anything you want to look at. Well, there we go. I think, I think I'm satisfied with my drawing. And this kind of happened by accident with this like this little cool little like lines. Kind of gives it a bit more of a feathery texture. I did that completely by accident. Don't ask me how. I think it was just from just heavy hand at some point. So drawing a little each layer. But yeah, you can kind of incorporate that if you'd like. You can do the same. So anywhere else, just kind of yeah, like nice little like textures and feathers like that. Uh, make sure to blend in any kinds of different kinds of feathers in. You can do that in multiple ways, just sort of scribbling over it or smudging it with your finger or a combination of both, whatever works for you. Um, now the head, I did kind of neglect the head a little bit because I'm kind of scared to touch it, <laughs> but I think I'll just add kind of the same little lines as we did for the other scaly parts in some areas under the jaw here. Just kind of give a hint of, of scales. It's too small and too far away from our perspective to see anything major with that, but I'll just kind of darken it a bit and leave it like that. Maybe right now what I like to do is just sort of add sort of a ground slash shadow underneath just to make it look like it's standing on something and not floating in midair. Yeah, that's kind of my final touch for most of my drawings. All right, but there we go. A complete and relatively realistic there is in a source. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something new. Um, make sure to like and subscribe if you'd like more content like this. And as always, have a great day.